I get a lot of questions focusing on how to create battle maps, so I decided to put together this list of nine ideas for visual elements that will help get you started. And actually a good majority of the assets on this list can be found over at Envato Elements, the sponsor of today's video. With a subscription to Envato Elements, you get access to over 56 million assets. Now, while it's nice to be able to create a lot of elements from scratch, oftentimes I'm in need of elements to help create my map animations quickly. I'm constantly using assets from Envato in my animations. These include icons, ink transitions, sound effects, textures, and almost everything you'll find on this list. And pretty much anytime I'm looking for something specific or unique, I can always find it on the site. As you watch this video, be sure to go check out the website as you're going to find a bunch of different examples of these assets that I'm explaining on the site. All different types of variations and styles. And the beauty is that if you join, you get unlimited downloads of all these assets. Envato offers a nice and clean, simple lifetime commercial license, which is good even after your subscription ends. Following the link in the video description is going to give you 50% off when you select an annual subscription, which will give you access to everything on the site for under $20 a month. First up, we have Arrows. Arrows can help visualize a large scale invasion, troop movements, and in fact Geolayers has a specific tool dedicated to creating arrows, and it's super easy to use. You simply click on this button here, and then you can draw out a path. This will create an arrow which is automatically keyframed and animated. And there are a ton of different parameters over here in the effect controls panel, so you can create your own custom look. You can even do different visualizations by size by giving the different arrows different widths. And there are a ton of options available over at Envato Elements as well. If you go under stock video, there's a ton of different styles and looks, all pre-animated with alpha channels, ready to go. Or if you want to animate something yourself, you can go to the graphics section, and there are plenty of Illustrator and Photoshop files. And you can really find whatever you're looking for. Icons look great on a map. And there really are a ton of free icons out there available. This is a site called Icon Finder. I'm going to do a simple keyword search for military and I'm gonna filter out everything by free options and just check out all the things that I have available here. Really great. These look really good in a legend. You can also easily animate these to move around your map. Now over here on Envato Elements, they have these icon packs, which are great. And the good thing about using these is you have a bunch of different options and they're all created by the same designer. So you have a very similar look between your icons. There's also a section on Envato Elements called 3D where you can download some really, really cool things. For example, here's a tank. Now you can't download this as like a true 3D object, like an OBJ or something. You can simply navigate this around in 3D space and then download a specific angle that you like. And you can download that either as a PNG with transparency or as a PSD file. And this is really fun. I actually created a standalone tutorial all about like a World War II tank battle using a few of these 3D elements. If you wanna go check that out, I'll link that down in the video description. I'm often using these explosions to help visualize things like invasions or rocket attacks. There's a free pack of these elements from Premium Beat. I'll link to that down in the video description. There's a couple of animations from Top View that, that I use all the time. And then naturally there are plenty of premium options over at Envato Elements. Some of these assets come with an alpha channel ready to go. Others are against a black background where you have to use blend modes to knock that background out. And you can really layer these up to create some cool composites. I often use these in conjunction with the military icons and those 3D objects, as you saw in the tank tutorial example. Definitely go check these out. So if you want to create map animations, I suggest one of the first things you learn is how to work with track mats. This is a column you'll find down in the timeline here. I use these all the time to help visualize invasions. A track mat is essentially one layer taking the transparency information of another layer, and it can create that transparency based off of the alpha information or the luma information of your source layer. So let's say I have a country shape layer here, and I want to reveal it. I can do that by creating a second shape layer and then animating the path of that layer, and then using that as an alpha mat for my country shape layer. To make the mat even more dynamic, I can add a repeater and then tweak the end opacity and even add a turbulent displace effect to make my edges incredibly detailed. This is a pretty advanced technique and if you're using pre-comps and working in 3D space, it can get complicated really quickly. So I actually created a standalone tutorial. Again, the link for that is in the video description. You can also head over to Envato Elements and find these really cool pre-made ink spill animations. And a lot of these are in black and white so you can use these as luma mats and they look really great. Flags are a great addition to any map animation. They're always super interesting because they have their own shapes and colors that often symbolize very specific things. Flags are always readily available. You can find them on Wikipedia, download them for free, and you can almost always find them as neatly labeled vector files so you can bring those files into Adobe After Effects and really tear them apart and animate all the individual assets of these flags. This can often drive uh, design choices like colors of your map, 
and it's just a great way to create that secondary movement. You can also use these in conjunction with track mats to put them in the borders of your countries. Now this isn't exactly a battle map, but this is a great example of where I brought in a flag. I had the arm animate on and I had the flames moving. I used the puppet tool here to create this little animation. In fact, this is available as an exclusive tutorial over on my Patreon page for my tier two patrons. You can actually watch this and download all the project files. It's a really fun tutorial and I suggest you go check it out. Link to the Patreons down in the video description. As with flags, you can find many portraits available for free download on Wikipedia. I got to work on Johnny Harris's Ukraine-Russia video, and on a handful of those animations, I created map labels of both Putin and Zelensky. And I recently just finished a few animations of Columbus, and we used a portrait of him as well, and we even animated his mouth to have him talk. I'll feature that in an upcoming tutorial. But I actually created a standalone detailed tutorial showing how I created the map labels of Zelensky. If you want to check that out, I'll link to that in the video description. And if you'd like to download all those project files, again, those are available over on my Patreon page. Speaking of Patreon, big shout out to my tier 3 patrons, Tyson the Keymaster, Samara Mahdi, Mike and Sandra over at YouTube at Flumi Plus One, and Josh. Thanks again folks for making this video possible. Tons of maps use these repeating line patterns. This is great to visualize like an occupied zone. And if you animate them, it's really great for like secondary movement. So if you have a static map that the camera's not moving, you can always have just like real subtle movement with those lines. So to create it, just grab the pin tool, add two points to create a path, and then add a repeater, tweak some of the parameters within the repeater until you get some copies and offset them to position them as you like. And then you can use a combination of shape layers as track mats as well as masks to create the shape and look that you want. So if I wanna show all of France here, I can simply create a new shape layer of France and use that as a track mat for my repeating lines layer. And now I can simply animate these lines to give me that subtle secondary movement. If you're using these a lot, you can actually create an animation preset, and I've included an animation preset over on my Patreon page. Repeaters are just all around a very cool tool that I think you should, you know, practice and master. They allow you to quickly create some pretty dynamic looking animations. Again, on this Ukraine-Russia video that I worked on, one of the key visuals were these troop clusters. And we were able to put these together by creating a simple ellipse and then adding a repeater and then repeating the repeater several times over and slightly changing the parameters of each repeater. This quickly allowed me to create what looked like a ton of different troop clusters all moving with different speeds and position changes. There's a link to the standalone tutorial down in the video description and I've got the project files as well as some animation presets over on the Patreon. And if you haven't seen Johnny Harris's documentary, be sure to go check that out as well. After Effects comes with an effect called Radio Waves, which is really great for map animations. I use it to create basic locators as well as bomb blast visualizations. You can do like a radar look. You can do some like cool submarine animations. Heck, you could even animate radio waves. The cool thing about this effect is you can get wildly different looks very, very quickly, and you can quickly create some animation presets. Yes, and once again, I have a standalone tutorial for this topic, which I'll link down to in the video description. I really do a deep dive on this topic, and there's also project files and animation presets, once again, available over on the Patreon page. You know what? If you haven't joined my Patreon page at this point, I don't know what else to tell you. Okay, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you do create some battle maps, please share a link with us down in the video description. Love to check that out. And once again, I link to a lot of tutorials and all kinds of stuff, so be sure to check down in the video description. I'm going to have all those links down there, so you can go check out all those other tutorials that I created. See you next time, folks.